Welcome to the Simplifying of Radicals Corncast. In this corncast, we're going to review the process in which you simplify radicals. Before we proceed to the examples of simplifying radicals, please recall the rules that we use for simplifying radicals. Take a moment and write these down, please. The two rules on the left are two different forms of the product property. If we take the square root of a product, we can rewrite that square root as the product of two square roots. Now the nice thing about these rules is that they can go in the other direction. For example, the second example of the product property is now we are multiplying two square roots. And when multiplying two square roots, please make note that you're going to multiply the terms in front of the square roots as well as multiplying the terms within the square roots. When we add or subtract square roots, please make note that in order to make this process happen, the square root has to be the same thing. And also make note that that square root is not going to change. In other words, when you add or subtract radicals, you're really just collecting like terms. The final uh, rule for radicals is the quotient property. When we take the square root of x divided by y, that's going to equal the quotient of two radicals now. And just like the product property, that can also go in the other direction. So if we get the quotient of two radicals, we can rewrite it as one square root. In example one, we're going to rewrite the square root of 80 in what we call simple radical form. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to accomplish this task. The first method I'm going to call the perfect square method. Now the perfect square method means that I'm going to try to factor out the largest perfect square out of 80 that I can. So for example, in this particular problem, I know that 16 is the largest perfect square that I can factor out of 80. So 16 times 5 is going to give me 80. Using my product property, I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Now the nice thing about the perfect square method is that we know what the square root of a perfect square is. So for example, the square root of 16 is 4. Now what we don't know is we don't know what the square root of 5 is, so we're just going to multiply square root of 5 to the 4. So my answer for this particular problem is going to be 4 root 5. Now the other method I'm going to use to simplify the square root of 80 is I'm going to use the factor tree method. So I'm going to take the number inside the radical, in this case 80, and I'm going to factor it using my prime factorization. For example, 2 times 40 is going to give me 80. 2 times 20 is going to give me 40. 2 times 10 is going to give me 20, and 2 times 5 will give me 10. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 80 as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now the nice thing about this process is that all you have to do is look for pairs of numbers. For example, my first pair are these two twos right here. Now what's nice about this process is that 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So what ends up coming outside of my radical is 1, 2. Now as I keep looking for pairs, notice that I have two pairs of 2's right here again. So 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So what ends up coming out of the radical again is another 2. Now also note that there's only one 5 inside the square root right here. So I cannot take a 5 out. It needs to stay inside the square root. So since all my operations are multiplication, I'm going to have my 2 times my other 2 times what's left. Well, what's left is the square root of 5. And now the last thing we need to do in this process right here is multiply my 2 times 2 which is 4 square root 5. And uh, just like last time, we got 4 root 5. 
Now, the nice thing about uh, simplifying radicals is that it doesn't matter which process you use. Some may like the factoring better than the perfect squares, um, and so vice versa. Um, however, sometimes it's good to use both methods. So please make note of both of them, and uh, hopefully it'll make your um, simplification process a little bit easier. As in example one, we're going to rewrite this expression in simple radical form. We're going to need to use the product property for this. And if you recall, we're going to have to multiply the term on the outside of the radical together. So two times three. And we're also going to have to multiply the terms on the inside of the radical, six times two. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this problem in two different ways. 2 times 3 is 6, so multiplying on the outside of the radical is pretty easy. And multiplying on the inside, 6 times 2, which is 12. Now we need to decide if we can simplify this any further. Well, just like uh, the last example, I know that uh, 4 is a perfect square that can be factored out of 12. So we can indeed simplify this radical even further. So 12 is really 4 times 3. Now when we go ahead and use our product property, we're going to get 6 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And since all our operations here are multiplication, we're going to get 6 times 2 times the square root of 3. Well, 6 times 2 is 12. So our final answer for this particular problem is going to be 12 root 3. Now let's take a look at this problem using a different method. Just like before, 2 times 3 is 6, but instead of multiplying on the inside of the radical, I'm going to leave it factored. Because if you remember our factor tree method, we need to factor the product in here. Well, it's already kind of factored for us. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that inside product alone. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and factor the 6 now. So 6 is really 3 times 2. So on the inside of the radical, I'm going to get 3 times 2 times 2, which if you multiply that out, does give us 12. Now if you remember, when we use our factored form for simplifying radicals, we want to look for a pair of numbers. Well, there's my pair of 2's. So those 2's are now going to come outside of the radical. Since all my operations are multiplication, I'm going to get 2 times 6 times what's left over. Well, square root of 3 is the only thing left, and since it doesn't have a pair, it's going to stay inside the radical. So I'm going to multiply the 2 times 6 times root 3. Now the last thing I want to do is just go ahead and multiply the 2 times 6, which is 12, and multiply that by root 3. And so if you notice, that's the same answer that I got um, doing it the other method. Now sometimes it's better to multiply it out and then simplify, and sometimes it's better just to not multiply and then factor even further. And uh, sometimes it's a good idea to use a mixture of both properties right there. In example three, we are going to have to be able to add these two radicals together. If you recall from our addition of radical property, we are going to be unable to add these two together because they are not the same thing. So in order to continue to try to add these, we must first simplify the radicals first. Well, using the perfect square method that I showed you before, the biggest perfect square that goes into 45 is 9. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 45 as the square root of 9 times 5. And I'm going to add my 4 to that. And then I'm going to simplify the square root of 20. Well, the biggest perfect square that goes into 20 is a 4. So to my 4, I'm going to multiply the square root of 4 times 5. Now continuing with my uh, simplification process, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 5 is the square root of 5. So I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 5 plus 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So because every operation in, my, in this part of my expression is multiplication, I'm going to multiply my 4 by 2. And then the square root of 5 is just the square root of 5, so I'm going to multiply that by the square root of 5. 
Now one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply my 4 times 2 and get 8. So that's going to leave me with the 3 square root of 5 plus 8 square root of 5. Now if we take a look at our expression right here, our left part of our expression is being multiplied by square root of 5, and the right part of our expression is being also being multiplied by square root of 5. So our, by our addition of radical property, we are now able to add these together. Before we do that, let's take a look at an example that we did in Algebra 1. Let's say 3x plus 8x. Now if you recall from Algebra 1, these are like terms. So 3x plus 8x is 11x. Now if you look at our expression right now, notice that this expression is not much different than the one we just studied. But instead of multiplying by x's, we're being multiplied by square root of 5's. So these are like terms. Since they're like terms, 3 root 5 plus 8 root 5 is 11 root 5. And that's the answer for this particular example right here. So please make a special note of this addition process and notice that we have to have the same radical and notice that that radical is not going to change. In example 4, I'm going to have to use the quotient property to simplify this expression even further. But before I do that, I notice that I have 14 times the square root of 8 all divided by 7 times the square root of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this expression as 14 sevenths times the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 2. Now I know that I can simplify fractions right here, so 14 divided by 7 is going to give me a 2. And I also know by the quotient property of radicals that if I have a square root divided by a square root, I can rewrite that as a single square root. So I'm going to be left with 2 times the square root of 8 divided by 2. Now just like I did in my first step right here, where I divided the 14 sevenths, I'm now going to reduce the fraction 8 halves, which is 4. So that's going to leave me with 2 times the square root of 4. Now I know what the square root of 4 is, it's 2, so that leaves me with 2 times 2. And so the final answer for this particular simplification of this expression is 4. Well, that's it for the review of simplifying of radicals. Well, there's one more rule to look at.